Hello everyone, this is Jay from Bro Gaming TCG, and today we're back with some more Road to Worlds gameplay. Now, I know I haven't uploaded in a couple days, but I've been pretty busy with school and some other stuff, so I do apologize. Uploads are going to slow down a little bit, but going to be a lot more quality content. Uh, I'm really focusing on getting really good games. Uh, if, it's, if I don't really think it's that great or there wasn't anything really to talk about, I'm not going to upload. Um, so it's going to be pretty sporadic. I'm going to try to do about five videos a week. So that means Saturday and Sunday, or most likely my busy days, which are Monday and Wednesday. I will not be uploading, and that will start next week. So a little bit of a schedule preview for you. Now, into the gameplay here, I want to talk about trading. And basically what I mean by that is trading prize cards. So... Each player has six prize cards, as you probably know, but GXs and EXs cost two prize cards, while a normal basic Pokemon or a Stage 1 Pokemon only costs one prize card. And what that means is that I'm going to win this game, because he is playing a deck full of EXs and GX Pokemon also. Uh, he is playing a deck that is conservatively slow, and I'm playing a deck that is fast. My Golduck Alolan Ninetales deck is all based on outspeeding your opponent, getting set up before them, and as you can see, I already have three Pokemon down, he's, only, he's got th two Pokemon on his bench, and I'm already starting to deal damage. He, on the other s side of the board here, is still not doing damage. I've got 120 down on the field. So I'm already outspeeding him, and I'm already set up very good. Now this Guzma does throw a wrench into the gameplay here, and honestly... This Guzma that he played at the beginning of the game was his only saving grace. This was the only way he was actually going to win the game, was if that Guzma worked out for him. Now, there were a few things that I could have done to uh, repercuss that Guzma, but unfortunately I didn't have the hand to do it. And considering that I didn't want to go into the discard pile, grab out Sycamore, and then, get in, uh, and then try to draw into something else, I just decided to sit and wait. He's playing a slow deck. I'm like, okay, I don't really need to... Uh, do anything here. I know that most likely uh, he's going to play pretty conservatively. He's afraid of the Golduck on my bench. That's the only card that he's afraid of right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my Lysander. And I'm not going to use it this turn because I'm trying to draw out his uh, attack here, his Phoenix Burn. Now he does use Sacred Fire and get 50 damage on my Golduck here. There you go. And honestly, neither of us have taken prize cards yet, but I'm still in a comfortable position where I can let two to three prize cards go before I even take a prize card because one prize card for me I mean one knockout for me is two prize cards while he has to get three knockouts which is a little bit harder to do now my Pokemon are a lot lower HP and for him are pretty easily easily knocked out considering he's got a Pokemon that does 160 and a Pokemon that can do upwards of 180 so pretty easy knockouts plus he's got Tur on the bench and here he's going to use Sacred Fire and take my, the first prize card here, which is a little unfortunate. But I'm still not stressed out. I actually draw into a level ball, which is really, really nice. Uh, get my Golduck, uh, get him out on the field, and I only have one in the discard pile, which that's all right. I have one in my hand as well. Going to go ahead, grab that, and then we're going to use Double Jet. So that's going to put another 120 damage out on the field. Now you have to remember, he's only put 100 damage, and I've put 240 so I've put more damage out on the field, but he's taken one prize card. And that's kind of the whole na name of the game, is who's going to put more damage out the quickest. And that's kind of comes in with the uh, prize trading. So I'm going to go ahead here and use an Aqua Patch to get a energy onto my Alolan Ninetales now since I evolved it, and Dive Ball for my Golduck, which was pretty good, uh, considering that I was able to use Space Beacon here to grab two energy and get another double jet off which really puts him back because the only Pokemon that he has with energy on it now is in fact his Turtonator GX. This is kind of where it starts to go downhill for him and that's kind of the bad part about slow decks is that if you're playing a fast deck then they are going to out trade you on prize cards. It does not matter how hard your Pokemon hit if they outspeed you. That's kind of the whole thing with Metagross. Metagross and Solgaleo is a very fast deck. It is entertaining. Uh, they are very good at interchanging on the bench and it, with the active Pokemon because of Solgaleo's effect, and it really, really helps that uh, helps them out in 
providing enough damage and quick enough damage to knock out heavy opponents. It's kind of the same with Gardevoir. Gardevoir is a fast deck. It can build up damage really quick. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the knockout on this Orunguru and he's going to throw out his second Ho-Ho of the game. Now it's pretty easy. I have two Golducks down on the field so I'm not too worried about him using Sacred Fire and knocking out one of my Golducks because he has four, I have three. It's only going to even up the game and I'm going to take a prize card next turn no matter what. Now he does gonna go, he is going to go ahead and Altar of the Sun here which does throw a wrench in my plan because that takes away the weakness of water on Turtonator and on Volcanion, which is going to make my final prize card a little bit harder to get and I think he knew that. Now I'm going to use Space Beacon grab the two energy and knock out this ho-ho. Now you gotta realize I have only taken three knockouts here and I am down to one card and he's taken three knockouts and he is down to three cards. And this is why I like playing budget decks so much is not because they're relatively good it's because I personally can be out top meta decks which this is not a top meta deck by any means by simply price trading. And it's that simple. I just have to outspeed my opponent. And I'm actually, if you looked at the beginning of the game, I'm on a four win streak where I actually have been playing very well with this deck. And this is going to make it a five win streak now, which is pretty good for the Pokemon trading card game online. Now, he does put down a, the Sandalit, and that actually gives me my win condition, and he probably shouldn't have done that. He uses his Nest Ball to get the Sandalit down, and that's just not a good idea. I actually use in to see if I can get the um, my Stadium in my deck, and I actually pull Lysander, which is, was actually gave me a, a win condition, I guess. So I go ahead and throw Alolan Ninetales out, because if he does use Turt, um, it's not going to hurt me at all. So the only option he has is to use Nitro GX his GX move and kind of uh, do nothing. So I kind of just kind of put myself in a be perfect position, which I actually almost used level ball on accident, but I corrected myself, got the two cards, used double jet, and that is going to be the game right there. I'm going to pick up my last prize card. Easy peasy, lemon, squeezy, everyone. That is how you win games. That is how you do it. Anyways, if you are not subscribed to the channel, what the heck are you waiting for? This is an awesome channel. I give tons of information out on Pokemon and the Elder Scrolls Legends, and we will soon be uploading Hearthstone. Anyways, guys, this has been Jay from Bro Gaming TCG. I want to remind you all to always keep on battling and pursue your dreams. Thanks for watching.